So far we've envisioned acids primarily as HA and bases primarily as either A- minus or the neutral base form B. And in this video what I want to do is clarify how ions can act as acids or bases. In particular we've already seen that anions can act as bases and I want to introduce the idea in this video as well that cations can act as acids. We'll see also how salts which contain a cation and an anion can act as either acids or bases depending on the relative strengths of M plus as an acid and A minus as a base. All right, so we've seen before that anions can act as bases. The anion can accept a proton to form neutral HA, which is this conjugate acid, and in this way it's acting like a base in that it's accepting a proton from an acid like water. Do note that the strengths of anions as bases can vary, so while it seems like this should be a favorable process since we're going from something that's negatively charged to something that's ultimately neutral, different anions have different stabilities. And so, for example, if the conjugate acid of A- is a strong acid, something like HCl, then the base itself, something like Cl-, is a weak base. We saw this before, and it's based on the idea that pKa plus pKb must be equal to 14. If the conjugate acid of A- is a weak acid, something like NH3, which is a very weak acid, then A-, minus, the conjugate base of that, is a strong base, NH2-. Minus. So we see here that even though NH2- minus and Cl- minus are both anions, NH2- minus is a strong base, while Cl- minus is a weak base. Cations can also act as acids. The molecular details of this are a little bit more complicated, but nonetheless, it's a fairly intuitive idea once we understand what's going on. When a cation is solvated by water molecules, the water molecules coordinate to the cation at the oxygen atom, where the oxygen is pretty tightly bound to the M plus cation. What this does is it pulls electron density away from the hydrogen atoms, rendering them more positive and more acidic. A base can then come along and remove one of the protons of water, which is rendered more acidic through this coordination mechanism. And the resulting product is now a metal hydroxide, M plus and OH minus, and a proton has coordinated to the base that has come along to remove that proton, forming HB plus. In fact, we can think of M plus OH minus as the conjugate base of this M plus OH2 molecule that we started with. So these two are related like a conjugate pair, and the more basic the metal hydroxide is, the less acidic the conjugate acid is, the M plus H2O complex. Just like we saw for bases, the strengths of cations for as acids can vary. Essentially, the strength of a cation as an acid depends on how strongly it pulls electron density away from water molecules that are coordinated to it. And if we think back to this paradigm of the metal hydroxide as the conjugate base and the M plus H2O as the conjugate acid, well then, if the metal hydroxide is a strong base, something like lithium hydroxide, that means the lithium cation, surrounded by or coordinated by water molecules, is a weak acid. If the metal hydroxide is a weak base, then the metal cation is a strong acid, and a good example of this is something like iron 3 hydroxide, which is a very weak base. The acidic version of this contains an iron 3 plus cation coordinated by six water molecules and these six water molecules are very acidic. This is related to the idea that the original iron hydroxide, the conjugate base in a sense, is a weak base. When we think about salts, salts contain cations and anions, right? So salts can either act as acids via their cation or bases via their anion. When you examine a salt, consider the cation as an acid and the anion as a base. And the behavior is dominated by the more reactive ion, and this is an important concept to keep in mind. There are some salts that contain a weakly acidic cation and a weakly basic anion, something like NaCl. Na plus is a very weak acid. How do we know? We consider the metal hydroxide of sodium plus and realize that this is a strong base, hence the Na plus cation itself must be a weak acid. We can do the same thing for Cl minus. Consider its conjugate acid now, HCl, which we know to be a strong acid. That means that Cl- must be a weak base. So we have a salt consisting of a weak acid and a weak base, 
and this translates into an equilibrium pH when we dissolve NaCl in water of right around 7. The dissolution of Na plus and Cl minus doesn't introduce any new acid-base equilibria really. Na plus and Cl minus are what I like to refer to as rocks. They just sit there and don't react. You'll want to develop intuition for whether a salt will cause an increase or decrease in the pH of pure water upon dissolution. The way to do this is to decide which of the two components of the salt is more reactive. The first thing you'll have to do is break up a salt into its component ions. So in looking at ammonium chloride, for example, we have NH4 plus and Cl minus, and now we need to decide which of these is the more reactive component. Well, Cl minus is the conjugate base of a strong acid, and so it's a weak base, meaning it probably won't be involved in any important acid-base equilibria in water. In fact, we saw that for NaCl previously. NH4, on the other hand, is the conjugate acid of NH3. And so there's an acid-base equilibrium that's going to go on here, and we start with that. Since we're thinking of this as an acid, we start with the acid dissociation equilibrium of that cation, NH4 plus reacting with water to form NH3, the conjugate base, and hydronium, H3O+. If this reaction goes to the right to any significant degree, we're going to generate H3O+. That's going to cause a decrease in the pH from the natural value in pure water of 7, since the concentration of hydronium is going to go up as a result of this acid dissociation equilibrium. So we would expect that the pH of an ammonium chloride solution should be less than 7. This should be an acidic solution, since the behavior of the salt is dominated by the acidic cation. As a second example, consider lithium phosphate. In lithium phosphate, we have Li plus cations and PO4 3 minus anions. The conjugate base of Li plus is the strong base lithium hydroxide. Hence, we know that as an acid, Li plus will be very weak. This is very typical of alkali metal cations. They tend to be rocks. Li plus, K plus, Na plus don't engage in, sort, in any sort of acid dissociation behavior. So the behavior of this salt and its effect on pH is going to be dominated by the basic behavior of PO4, 3 minus. And we can write a base association equilibrium of PO4, 3 minus in water. Thinking about salts in this way illustrates another general principle of acid-base equilibria, which is that you always want to react the acid or the base with water, never with hydronium or hydroxide, whose concentrations are much, much lower than the actual concentration of water in the solution. There are many, many more water molecules in any aqueous solution than there are hydronium and hydroxide. At any rate, when PO4-3- picks up a proton, we get HPO4- 2 minus, increasing the charge by 1 since it's picked up a positively charged proton, and we get hydroxide. And again, as we saw before, if this equilibrium goes to the right to any significant degree, which we would find it does if we looked up the Kb of PO43 minus, then we're going to generate hydroxide and increase its concentration. This is going to decrease the pOH of the solution and it's going to increase the pH of the solution since the hydronium concentration will have to go down. Remember the hydronium hydroxide seesaw. That means for this salt, the pH of a solution in water is going to be greater than 7. Lithium phosphate will cause the generation of hydroxide and an increase in the pH.